everyone. Welcome back to Show Me How to Win. We're visiting Gamma Expo 2020 and we're in AEG's booth, one of my favorite publishers. You guys are located in SoCal, so I visit you guys all the time. But Peter, right here, isn't actually in SoCal. This is the first time I met you, even though I really enjoy Tiny Towns. So Peter is the designer of Tiny Towns. Peter, tell me the story behind Tiny Towns. How did it, what's your inspiration? How did it come about? Well, I had a really boring desk job, so it was a very creative year for me for that reason. And I was thinking about the mechanics of Minecraft, where you use resources to make a bunch of different things, and then the app 2048, where numbers sort of glom into each other and combine. I always thought there must be some way to take that mechanism from 2048 and use it in a board game. And it also comes from this game that is a, a family favorite of mine that we play at restaurants while waiting for food, where each player has a 5x5 five five grid, and you take turns saying letters that all players have to put into their grid, and you try to form as many words as possible. So I wanted to make a game where it's the players controlling what resources go onto their boards and they all have to deal with the same situation. So somewhere between those three ideas, Tiny Towns was born. Okay, good. But wait, I already made a video on Tiny Towns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, uh, what, what am I, a chopped liver? I, I already made a perfectly fine Tiny Towns Show Me How to Win video. Pete, Pete you should talk about the expansion Tiny Towns Fortune because it's the new expansion and 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 you know I already given them the best advice about Tiny Towns. <laughs> Maybe you can handle Fortune this time. How does that sound? I mean, you know, it was a it was a partnership. It was a co-design, but I think I can I can handle it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are you going somewhere, Josh? Yeah, yeah, I gotta go back to Santa Monica. <laughs> I love I love I love <laughs> I love Josh. He's great. So yes, Josh has already actually gave me a lot of tips on how to play Tiny Towns the base game. So we're talking about Tiny Towns Fortune now. So tell me, what has changed since Tiny Town? Now there is money involved, right? Yes, the critters of the forest have invented money and it's brought all sorts of wonderful things and a few problems, but mostly wonderful things to the land of Tiny Towns. So the way you earn money is uh, you need to make two buildings at the same time, which is a challenging thing to do. In regular tiny towns, it's not really something you want to do. So in this, you need to make two buildings at once, which gets you a coin. Um, now, coins are points at the end of the game, which is great, but their real value comes in spending a coin to place a different resource than the one named by another player as master builder. So, you know, in base tiny towns, when someone says gray and you're like, oh my gosh, I cannot handle a gray right now. Now you can just pay a coin and place a different resource. Um, but building two things at once is hard and it only gets harder as the game goes on because you just have less and less space. So right out of the gate, you're really filling your board up with a lot of resources to pull off that first double build to start earning coins. By the way, for uh, folks who hasn't played Tiny Town before, it's basically, in a way, it's kind of like a roll and write, but with erasers and meatballs, right? So uh, every turn, there will be an active player who's called a ma master builder. Yes. The builder would choose a cube. Look, if they don't know how to play Tiny Towns, they should watch the video that I did. I don't know why you need to explain it. <laughs> Okay, this is, all right, let's do it real quick. So basically you pick one cube and then you put it on the board and then you finish. So you're trying to make the matching building patterns here. Each building requires its own combination of resources in the right shape. So you need to get those resources, put them on your board, and then they will sort of glom together and you put a resource token in one of the spaces where the cubes were. But you can only have one cube or building per space, so things get really cozy really quickly. So basically, uh, for example, this root, root uh, seller here takes one red, one gray, one brown, and one yellow in a specific formation. So you have a four by four grid. You will start by cu putting cubes on there, but once you have the perfect combination, you'll remove the four cubes and then you'll put a building meeple on there. So you basically free up three more spaces that you can build other buildings later. So as the game goes on, you won't have as many cubes on your um, board. You will have finished buildings. So you can actually work on multiple buildings at the same time, say one building might require eight spaces and one building will require four spaces. So you're actually taking up up to 12 spaces. But once you complete it, that only take up two spaces. And now you have brand new spaces to make new buildings again, right? So coins, money, it applies in the game to help us basically say that, okay, I can't handle a color right now. 
So I can change that. That actually is very big because that take a lot, takes the power of hate drafting away from the master uh, builder. So how do we get money? So you get money by making two things at once. There are also some cards, some building cards introduced in the expansion that will give you money. So some of them, like Gambler's Den here, says if you have exactly one coin when you build it, you get two coins. But it can be, you know, you don't always have exactly one. Sometimes you have none or you have too many. Um, so there's a few different ways, but that double building is the primary way you're going to earn them. And it's important to think about what buildings you're going to try to build two of at once. Because if you go for two big buildings, like museum and jeweler, that's going to be a little tricky. Um, but pairing something big like museum with something small like mine, you're going to have a much easier time pulling off a double build if you pair big buildings with small buildings. I also think it's important to think about what resources you're using in the double build. Like if you try to make a mine and a root cellar, you don't have any blue between those. So if someone names blue, you might be in trouble. So look for resource diversity between the two buildings you're going for. Um, so a person can have up to four coins at a time, right? What are some? What's the timing of spending money or earning money? Like, should we try to get money? Should we try to hoard it, or should we try to get it throughout the game? Spend one, gain one, or should we spend it all at once? Or when should we make money and when should we spend it? Well, I think it's important to spend coins fairly frequently. If you have four coins, you're not able to earn any more. You know, you, if you double build, you that is money that is just thrown away. So I usually like to have around two or three. Sometimes you need to save up to four to build something big, but don't be afraid to spend coins throughout the game. It's the players who use coins wisely, who tend to do better than the players who hoard them and save them for a rainy day. Use them when something is a little bit awkward, not just when it's an absolute disaster resource that's gonna cause havoc in your town. Do we need money towards the end of the game? Like, do we need some, maybe some buildings require money? Well, you absolutely need money at the end of the game. Some of them cost money to build, and then some, like Root Cellar, you actually need coins to feed your cottages. So you want to save those coins. But it's easiest to earn money at the beginning of the game when your board is wide open and you've got the space to make two buildings at once. You might be able to do that four or maybe five times throughout the game, but your board is going to get really crowded later on, and you don't know for sure whether you'll be able to earn more coins from double building. Okay, so now you're the designer of the game. You must know the games in, in and out, inside and out, right? There's so many buildings in this game. There is like one, two, three. There's like seven colors, but if within each color, there's multiple versions of that color. So what are some of the good combinations between different colors? Like, is this one building really good to, if you build it to feed off other buildings? Give me some combos. Um, so one good combo if you want to get money quickly early on is just mine and root seller here They both give you a coin when you build them So if you can build both those at the same time I know I said it's tricky because you don't have any blue between those But if you can pull it off then you get one coin for building two things at once and then two more coins for each of the buildings Another good one that's a bit tougher is gambler's den and cathedral gambler's den says if you have one coin when you build this You gain two more coins so that's three coins right there and if you can build a cathedral at the same time, it costs three coins to build. So you build the gambler's den first, then you get three coins, then you make a cathedral and spend all your money, but you get a dollar back for making two things at once. So, and cathedral is a seven point building. That can really be the, the meat of your strategy if you can pull it off a few times. Cool. Uh, you guys are continuing to support Tiny Towns, putting out more content, and I get to ask you uh, your strategies on Tiny Town Fortunes. It was nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too, yes. Jackie. Yes. And thank you guys for watching.